Welcome back. So today we have some really cool sakes lined up and we are featuring namazake. So namazake, also known as nama, is unpasteurized sake. Sake is generally pasteurized twice to protect from spoilage. And in this case, these are basically raw sake. They come out of the press and they are not subdued by heat, uh, which means they have a shorter shelf life and they should be kept in the fridge. First one we have this time is Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute Sake. So this one is actually 65% milling rate. And this producer is pretty interesting because Noguchi Nohiko, he is from Ishikawa Prefecture. He's also from um, and part of the Noto Guild, and he's been brewing for over 70 years. He started in 1949, and he came out of retirement in 2017 based on some really intense energy from brewers who wanted to represent his style into the future. And he is really well known for um, the Yamaha revival and the 1980s Ginjo boom. Let's taste. So when it comes to the color, it's nice and clear. The nose is a bit umami driven. Usually you do get umami on the palate, but I can tell just from the smell that there is a good amount of amino acid and um, kind of umami characters. There's some like buttered toffee, some mango. Mm. On the palate, the alcohol content is very evident. Um, this is 17% alcohol. So it has this sharpness to it, but it balances really nicely with the light texture. And the fact that I'm assuming that this did go through the Yamaha process, which is a process that just um, accumulates lactic acid naturally. And it's made in a little bit more of a savory style. And I, this isn't specified as Yamaha, but um, based on just the flavor profile, it does seem like this sake went through that. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, this is great and the acidity is quite high. So when I did research on this one, I could not find the sake meter value, which is the um, hydrometer reading of glucose in the sake, uh, referring to residual sugar. Uh, I would assume if it was on the label that it would be maybe three to four, plus three to four. And then the acidity is extremely high for sake. It's very bright um, and it just really balances all the savoriness and those tropical fruit notes. We're gonna go through all of these. And the cool thing about Nama is that they are seasonal. So you get a really vast array of sake in the spring season, which emulate spring itself. The feeling you get during Hanami, um, lots of floral notes, fruit forwardness, sometimes a little extra sugar to bring out all those bright flavors. The next big season is not summer. It's actually autumn when the Hiroshis come out. And those are sakes that are pasteurized once and then aged. So that would be considered namazume. And they are also made in a style to emulate the season. So you get a little more like baked red apple, pumpkin, maybe a butternut squash note. Um, just really interesting stuff. So the two seasons that kind of get the shaft are summer and winter. And they're kind of similar in the way that you would want sake, especially a namazake, in the summertime when it's warm, to be crisp and cool and kind of fresh in your palate and fresh in your experience. The same happens in the winter though, because with namazake, you're not going to heat the sake to uh, balance the temperature of the outdoors. You're actually going to drink these cold. So it's the same idea in winter. You will drink a more stark, crisp, maybe less aromatic sake uh, when it comes to Nama. And the winter sakes are kind of the least popular. I see the least amount of sakes coming out uh, during that time, uh, Nama sakes. Uh, but summer, it seems like more producers are jumping on that bandwagon. So I'm happy to see so many this year. And the next one we have, which I also tried last night, um, at work because I brought these two bottles in and I forgot that I had them in the fridge after I bought them and I shared them with some good customers of mine. So we did try the uh, Noguchi no Hiko and we also tried uh, Chikorin and this is from Marumoto Sake Brewery. So this brewery is in Okayama Prefecture, which I'll show you right here. 
And actually this guy is Ishikawa, like I mentioned. <laughs> Perfect. So now you know where they are. Um, Ishikawa is on the Sea of Japan, very close to Niigata. Now I'm talking about this one, just so you know. The rice variety is Gohyaku Mangoku. Uh, it kind of lends itself to a crisper, leaner style. Uh, this one is made of Yamada Nishiki. And Maramoto Sake Brewery is very cool because they actually grow their own rice. And that's very rare for brewers because it was illegal for a long time. But in 2003, this area was deregulated and now they're allowed to do so. So they have some organic sake. They also make an amazing sparkling called Hohoshu. Hohoshu comes in half bottles and it comes in a blue style and a pink style. And the blue is a little more like a sweet Greek yogurt style. The other one is Danon strawberry yogurt, both sparkling. Oh, so good. I love Maramoto Sake Brewery. Uh, and this Chikoran is really cool too. Um, it's called Otoro and it's a Jinmai Ginjo. So. Mm. so this has a much higher residual sugar content. Um, this one's listed as a zero SMV. So if you're going from negative two through plus two, you're kind of in a neutral space. Um, each sake is a little different though. So the hydrometer reading is not always going to match up with another sake of another density. Uh, this does seem a bit sweet to me, um, but the finish is dry and the acidity is quite low and that could be why it's seeming a little sweeter. It's 1.1. This one here, when we get to it, is a higher acidity and a little bit um, drier SMV. So I actually haven't tasted this yet, I'm excited to. But this one has um, a lot of like fennel or poppy seed and uh, again, some tropical fruit, a lot of banana, banana bread. Ooh, and on the nose, it's um, just like candied green melon. Very, very ripe papaya. And just like kind of, just like hard candy, just like those old school fruit hard candies. This one almost seems like it could be a pasteurized sake, but because it doesn't have like that, I don't know, the texture I'm thinking of for uh, Nama, it's kind of smooth, but it's so good and so full of flavor. Um, I would almost mistake this for a spring nama. Okay, next one, Kurosawa. So Kurosawa is a brand um, by a brewery in Nagano, and it was founded by a sake importer named Jun Tanaka. And in 1996, he explored the US. He went to many Japanese restaurants and realized that there had to be a sake that paired uh, food or paired well for the American palate with food. So he developed a sake brand with this brewery and this brewery focuses on Kimoto production, which is similar to Yamahai, but it's a pole ramming technique that pulverizes the rice and then lactic acid will occur naturally to protect the yeast starter. So that kind of lends itself to like a subtle ricey note or kind of a lactic note, a little bit of cream maybe. Um, so I'm super excited to taste this and they call it draft sake and it's limited edition. And this is the first year I've seen this summer Nama by Kurosawa brand. And um, again, the SMV is plus two, the acidity is 1.6. So this should come off quite dry and also a 65% milling rate. And the rice variety is Miyama Nishiki. Perfect. So I am very eager to taste this one. By the way, the pricing is as such 88 now down to 76 it's your sake if you're lucky enough to grab one i believe this one is 34 no 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 this one's 40 this one's 34. oh it's kind of like has a little cloudiness to it not in a nigori way but just like an unfiltered way it's a little hazy Very, very subtle nose. Wow. I don't even know what it reminds me of. 
like um an I don't know maybe a Asian pear and durian like there's something funky here wow mmm it's so delicate the textures vanishes and it almost seems water like in a way that if I were to swallow it it would just feel like I didn't even swallow anything so delicate yeah so the alcohol content here must be pretty low where is it oh my god it is 13 and a half percent that's low for sake I was not expecting that I did not know that it was that low and now it's reminding me of beer malts. And I think that could be kind of coming from the fact that this is Kimoto and it's unpasteurized. So this is a very unusual sake. Um, when sake goes away from the range of 15 to 16%, which is where it's usually diluted down to, because at that around, the, around that realm, you're not tasting really anything. It's like the perfect sweet spot for the alcohol content when it's, a little bit higher than that. Let's say it's a Genshu um, and it's around 17, 18%. It seems very strong. Like you taste the alcohol, even at 16 and a half percent, you get it like that. But when you get down to like 14, 12, 13 and a half, it seems so much lighter. And that has to do with the fact that they're diluting down to get that alcohol content. It's, and there are Genshus that are hitting that kind of alcohol content, like a 14%. But the one I'm thinking of in particular was also Genshu. So they fermented up to 14%, but there was residual sugar remaining and they never diluted it. So it was very rich and robust. Uh, that's a whole nother ball game. Like that is not the same as achieving a alcohol content of this level through dilution. And it's not a negative thing. Dilution happens with most sakes, just like pasteurization does. But this is quite surprising. I had no idea it was a 13.5% alcohol. Uh, I guess it's surprising, though, because that's uh, kind of a similar so um, alcohol content to wine. You know, sake is hitting pr pretty high on average in comparison to wine. You know, you'd need a really big Zinfandel uh, or maybe a Cabernet from you know, California, or you'd need like an Amarone to reach just the normal level of alcohol for a sake. So while it's not distilled, sake does um, provide a lot more alcohol for you. This one actually has distilled alcohol. So this is not a gin mine. Anyway, these are three really interesting summer namas. If you wanna explore the namazake category, I highly recommend it. Um, check out True Sake if you're in the San Francisco area or if you're in any state that they ship to. You give them a call and they'll, you know, help you out. The only thing is if it's really hot and you're shipping far, um, you have to just, you know, figure out a way to get it to you faster so that it doesn't sit too long in a warehouse. All right. Thank you so much. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't. And I will have another video soon. I'll either do a psalm story about sommelier hazards um, or I'll do the orange wine one, which I royally screwed up last time and is the reason I haven't done a video in about three weeks. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Thanks so much. And check out some of these great sakes. Bye.